Okay, everyone. Uh, today, um, because of the comments on Reddit, I decided that I was going to do another video that described taking this apart and uh, assembling it step by step. So, real quick, uh, taking the screws out. And in, in here you'll see that I, I have the screen. I have already unscrewed the screws there. Here's the screen. Underneath this, you'll see that there's a full ribbon cable. And I literally just have it connected to the GPIO pins. And let's talk about what I've done to the case. So the bottom, the bottom part, I have done nothing. It's just a standard Raspberry Pi uh, B case. The top, though, I actually had to um, take out the section for um, the these two parts here. So I, I actually took a Dremel and I took that out. And then for the part where uh, the SD card goes, I actually took that out as well. <clears throat> so I took that out. I put the screen up on the on the back of the pie, like so. I marked my holes, and I drew, and I and I drilled them. Now for this for this hole, I, I used a um, a jeweler's Dremel, which is ran by a foot pedal, and I literally just eyeballed it and cut it out. Now, could I have used something better? Probably. Uh, should it have maybe a 3D printed top or <clears throat> maybe a frame around the outside of this uh, this hole? Probably. But uh, for all intents and purposes, it was just a quick and dirty installation of the screen. I also just uh, FYI, I took out the uh, clear clear uh, mapping light maps on that side there. So. <clears throat> Okay, now that you see you see how it's actually put together, I'll go ahead and start, uh, I'll bring it to the computer and show you what I had to install. Hello everyone. Today I thought I would talk about um, the e-paper display that I had talked about before from Embedded Arts. Um, there was a couple questions on the installation and, and a few of you wanted a tutorial on the installation of the e-paper display. So today I, I thought I would talk about setting up the e-paper e display inside uh, Raspbian and how to get the information and how to put it in the in the in the pie. So here we go. So um, on embeddedarts.com forward slash products forward slash displays forward slash LCD underscore twenty seven underscore epaper dot php. There are there is a table down below. And it talks about particular models. Uh, this is where you're going to follow for the model that you have, which is the EM27BS013 display. Um, so if you uh, go down, there's the GitHub repository, uh, GitHub information there. So um, in this tutorial, I'm going to walk through the process of installing the e-paper display um, and and how to put it, how I put mine inside my case. So uh, today, uh, you're going to already have Raspbian set up. Uh, you would actually clone it, clone the files from um, the repo from Embedded Arts. So there's the link uh, to get that information. It's going to copy it to your hard drive. Uh, if you don't have Git, in, Git installed, you're going to type <clears throat> Git, um, actually, sudo apt git install git so if you don't have if you don't have git installed you have to install this first before you can actually pull down the files or from the repository from embedded arts so um, all right so you have the files on disk moving to step two um, confirm the module set so their their expectations are that you have this SPI module in place so sudo mod probe spi hyphen bcm 2708 so you just run this command and then the, the next two steps are going to be installing some dependencies uh, for their software that they provide which is sudo app git install libfuse hyphen dev and sudo app git python imaging so those are those are the two um, 
dependencies. Now there may be more, but those are the two that I used um, and what I saw on their installation. So it seemed to work pretty good for me. Next, you're going to build and install from inside home, pi, the name of the repository, and your platform uh, from with OS. So there, it actually should be this path. Uh, so to install from there, just to give you an example, um, I'm actually already in there. So if I type PWD, uh, it shows my path. And I'm actually SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, from that point, I would run these commands. Uh, I have actually already have it installed. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through the installation. So um, we have um, RPI. It, you're going to run the make. So there should be a make file uh, in your installation directory. And you will, you will run cog version 2 make and then RPI EPD, which is the driver, underscore fuse. So, and that's the library, uh, libfuse under hyphen dev. So, um, you don't have to run this command again. Uh, I just put it in there to make sure that if this function isn't functional, um, it will not install the driver successfully. So, uh, if you run this command and it doesn't return anything, don't worry. Um, keep going to the next step. So the next the next process is making a directory called forward slash temp forward slash EPD. And then after that's actually done, you'll you'll uh, allow the driver hyphen common to be put in place. And then com underscore or cog version underscore version two. Uh, make RPI install. This is actually going to put the files where they need to be for the installation. And moving on to step five. Oh, this is actually sorry. This is actually going to install uh, the service for your driver, so that that it's available. And then step five is going to be testing your configuration. Now, this is only going to be for a test. So after the driver um, has been put in place and the service has started, um, you should be able to do these commands. If you can't, I still expect you to move forward until you cannot run a Python file and it's not functional. So do all your steps first. Um, if, the, if this works right out of the bat, great, um, but continue on. So set up... Um, Set up apps Twitter account. So apps Twitter account, you get um, some information, some key examples, or some sorry, some keys, uh, consumer key, secret key. So you you want to go there, set up your account so that it's functional. They will provide keys, and then that leads us to step seven, which in step seven um, you're going to move and run the move command in Linux. Uh, to tweepy underscore auth dot py hyphen sample to tweepy underscore auth dot py um, so that it that it actually it actually renames the file. Don't need this here. So are you changing it from the word sample to just tweepy underscore auth here. We're going to modify the tweepy underscore auth.py and we're going to go to apps.twitter.com and we're going to basically put uh, basic equals false, consumer key that, that, that apps.twitter.com gave you, consumer secret, access token, secret token. Now, the next step is going to be able to install the uh, tweepy inside Python and this is going to give you the ability to run those scripts, the dependencies for those scripts and it's pp install uh, tweepy. So it's pretty straightforward, just run that in the command prompt. And then the next step is to run, um, to actually run your script. Now for all intents and purposes I'm a, when you run the script you're above the word, the folder demo. So just to give you an example, I will run. I will run through that right now. I'm in 
a platform with OS, and if I do an LS here, I get see the folder demo. So see this folder demo here? Um, I'm gonna actually just run this command, and it will run, it will go out to Twitter and run that feed, which is the word Linux. That's the, that's the name of the feed. So if I click enter, it's gonna take a while um, at first to initialize it. Um, it's going to refresh the screen. You should automatically see option. And then here's our driver, EDP uh, 2.7, and then the native the native resolution of that display. And then now it's going through Twitter and it's pulling information from the feed. So it's pretty awesome. So it's pulling the information. So if you let it set now, if that Twitter if that Twitter feed updates fast, it's going to continually showing information. Down, down onto the display and in the console. Okay, so I'm going to Control C out of here. I just hit Control C, and then um, next would be the change the aspect, uh, the aspects of Twitter demo.py, and there's two settings that you'd want to change. One of them is your type of font. You may want to go down inside user share fonts true type inside Droid. If you want to, or go down and find the type of font that you would like to have on the display, and you just you look for possible message fonts, and you comment out or put a pound sign in front of any other fonts that you wouldn't like, and then you just declare your font, and it has to be a true type font. So, and then the next step, um, actually, this line, this line is. Um, the dimensions that you want it displayed on. So if you increase the font size, um, you'd actually want to set your um, set your font or set the width of the display, the entire display. So if you wouldn't want the, if you want Twitter just on part of the display, which is a pretty small display, but if if you want it on part of the display, you would change that value to a smaller number. Uh, unless you wanted to use the entire display and 24 seemed to work for me uh, so that was a pretty good happy medium to using the full display now um, starting at boot for step 12 to start at boot we'd actually um, the startup script in init.d uh, we'd install pdfuse in user sbin and then we'd, we'd do that with the following command so that is the the full installation of of the step by step Twitter for the EE display in the Raspberry Pi case um, from Embedded Arts. Okay, so here's the display, and this is what it looks like when it runs. You'll see that it actually spends time refreshing. Um, this is actually a a uh, Linux feed that's running right now and it's it's actually a pretty busy feed so I just wanted to show everyone what the screen looked like when it refreshed and there's a little bit of ghosting uh, but overall if you do enough swipes uh, in the Raspberry in the Raspberry Pi Python code um, it actually refreshes pretty well just so you can see it really good